Yeah. In the city, the day also signifies the start of war that has shaken the entire region. The war in Gaza, which has caused tens of thousands of Palestinian lives, and now the bombing of Lebanon. There is deep pain and anguish in Toronto's Muslim, Palestinian, and Lebanese communities. These communities are also connected to family and friends back home, and these communities are also grieving. The impact on our city has been challenging. Over the last year, we've seen hate crimes skyrocketed. Yesterday, the police chief shared update hate crime statistics. Over the last year, incidents of hate are up over 40%. That includes a 75% of hate towards the Jewish community and a 40% increase towards the Muslim communities. Of course, these numbers are only the reported incidents. I've personally seen the impact of the rise in hate. I've spoken to mosque leaders who have had people interrupt prayers or graffiti their walls. I spoke to the congregation at a synagogue that had its windows smashed. And I've seen the bullet hole scarring a Jewish school in North York. I want to reiterate that hate against any people practicing their faith or culture is not welcome in Toronto. Anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, hate, and violence in all its forms are not welcome here. Like many Torontonians, I feel the anguish of all that has transpired over the past year. But I believe we must continue to be a welcoming, kind, and compassionate city. I ask that we all keep hearing each other, look out for each other, and remember our shared bonds as Torontonians. Today's council agenda touches on many topics. <clears throat> I have my motion. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have my motion on food in schools, which feed, which will feed 8,000 more kids next year and will set us a path to a universal student food program. As you know, I'm proud to have helped establish the Toronto School Food Program when I was a school trustee and then later on as a counselor. Today, the program serves 227,000 meals per day to kids across our city. But that leaves over 100,000 kids across more than 220 public schools. And those include students in the city's lowest income neighborhoods. My motion set us on a path to correcting this and give young people a better start in life. Today's agenda also includes the congestion management plan we announced in September. We all know it's frustrating to be stuck in traffic <clears throat> in a car, a streetcar, or bus. It's lost time, time that you could be spending with your loved ones, uh, getting to work, time spent away, but instead you're stuck in traffic waiting for the cars to move. And this... In the management plan, <clears throat> there are important actions to get people moving, including, <clears throat> excuse me, changing the fees we change for block construction lanes to get them open sooner, uh, ch uh, so that the longer you block the lanes, uh, the, the longer you do your construction, the more you pay. Creating new traffic coordinating teams for special events and construction projects. Increasing fines for people that are blocking the box and stopping during rush hour. And I see them out there and we need to give, there has to be consequences. And of course, more traffic agent. The last item I want to highlight on this agenda is the island airport runway and safety area, call it RISA. The vote in front of council is not, I repeat, the vote in front of council is not about closing the airport. It's about keeping it open, safe, so people can continue to fly from it. 
<clears throat> the vote is about safety of passengers on planes flying into the island airport every day. According to the federal government, the runway is too short, a fact known 14 years ago. And to further delay extending this too short runway is irresponsible. So City of Toronto experts recommended a runway extension that meets safety requirements by the Transport Canada deadline. We can discuss the long-term future of the airport, which includes opening the tripartite agreement in the coming years. And the last agreement took five years to negotiate. And any suggestion that we can rush through a 40-year lease at this council meeting is not reasonable. So let's get the island airport up to safety standards now, quickly, so people can continue to enjoy and be able to fly from it. Thank you. Help me to take any questions <clears throat> that you may have. I imagine that uh, there'll be a lot of interest in that program redesign at council today. And I'm wondering what you will say when there are motions presented to kill the tax altogether. The city of Toronto have a housing crisis. And this housing crisis, because the rent is so high and there's not enough affordable housing, is leading to one out of 10 people using the food bank, even though some of them work two shifts. And that's really difficult, and a third of them are kids. So the vacant home tax is really about encouraging people that have empty units. And if you look in the evening into condos, there's quite a lot of them. There's some units that have been dark for a long time. And there's leaflets, you know, especially during election time, that are in front of the doors for months. So uh, this encouraged the owners to actually rent out their space and or sell it. Right? It also captures some of the funds. These are speculators that often just buy the units and, uh, and use it for, for the investment, which is fine, but don't leave it vacant. And that would actually capture some funds for the city of Toronto to build more affordable housing. And I think that is an important um, strategic direction, uh, which city council have voted repeatedly um, for the last few years to do so. <coughs> Mayor, uh, Councillor Thompson is currently on trial okay, for so sexual assault. Okay, so we're listening as Mayor Olivia Chow making some remarks ahead of uh, today's uh, council meeting, of course, talking about not only the rising hate incidents in the city. But